Hojo, masters of boom, pew, pchew, or as a normal person would call it, siege warfare. Hi, my name is Mr. Smardonkey and today we're taking a look at the ins and outs of the Hojo. I bet you can't guess what we're looking at first. Clan traits? No, you guessed it. The Hojo are actually master builders, but building castles is much less exciting than siege warfare, so we're sticking with that. First off, it's interesting to note that the Hojo are the only original clan to start with two provinces. Of course, the Ikuiki and Otomo start with two provinces too, but they're both DLC clans. The Hojo have free traits. Starting with their namesake trait, castles are cheaper to build and repair. It gives the Hojo a 10% discount when upgrading and repairing castles. Repairing usually isn't too expensive anyway, so I doubt you'll really notice the difference there, but upgrading castles will definitely save you some money over the long run. Reduce recruitment costs and upkeep for siege units and can recruit superior siege units are the same old, same old traits. The Hojo siege units are superior and cheaper than those of other clans. That brings us to the campaign. As I previously stated, the Hojo start with two towns, Izu and Sugami, both incredibly viable. Starting with Izu, your capital. Izu has the potential to become one of the richest towns in the game because of its gold mine. The rest of the town isn't very noteworthy with meager soil and no port, but the gold mine alone makes this town very valuable. Sugami is the more exciting starting town. It has barren soil, a port and a blacksmith, meaning this will likely be your main recruitment hub for the entire campaign. You also start with a siege engineer's workshop, but I'd recommend getting rid of it as soon as possible. We will get to the units later, but for now all I will say is that if you want to get any of the siege units, you want to do so in a province that has crafts works for extra accuracy, like Itachi. That brings us to the Hojo's neighbors. Directly to your west are the Imagawa, who own both Saruga and Totomi, as well as Mikawa through their vassal the Tokugawa. Saruga is a valuable province because of its school, and Mikawa because of its warhorse trade resource. Rather than expanding west, however, you're able to get an alliance with the Imagawa straight away and secure your western border that way, rather than waging war against them. Keep in mind, however, that the Imagawa start up war with the Oda and will 9 out of 10 times lose the war, meaning the Oda will be in your doorstep before long. Their disposition towards you will likely be far more hostile. To the north are the Takeda and Kai. They too have war horses, making Kai a very valuable province. If you decide to go the peaceful route with the Imagawa, you will likely be able to get an alliance with the Takeda as well, meaning your starting position is extremely secure, but this does limit your options to a single route. East in Musashi are the Ogagiyatsu. Musashi is a reasonably rich town with fertile soil on a port. Nothing remarkable, but a solid province to own. Expansion is quite clear for the Hojo, whether you ally with the Imagawa and Takeda or not. East is your best bet for easy expansion. There's definitely something to be said for taking out the Takeda early on, as they usually become quite strong, but allying with them will be one of the safest choices you can make in any campaign. To the east are many great provinces. Hitachi has the previously mentioned craftsworks, Kazuke has a school, and further east are many fertile and very fertile lands with plenty of resources. Lastly, a look at the family tree, which is fairly impressive. Your daimyo Hojo Ujiyasu has two traits. Guardian Spirit gives him a minus 5% chance of being assassinated, and Night Fighter gives him the ability to initiate night battles. You start with three kids to age 7, 6, and 4, which means that all your kids will likely come of age before the campaign is over. Your second general is an unrelated 31-year-old. Next up are the Hojo-specific units, of which there are five, with most being quite bad. Literally four of these units were featured in my top five worst units in Shogun 2, although I later removed the fire rockets as I found out they were actually quite good. Anyway, onto the units, starting with the Hojo Firebomb Throwers. Compared to their vanilla counterpart, the Hojo Firebomb Throwers have received plus 5 reload skill and plus 5 accuracy as their buffs, but that won't save this unit. The only thing I'd recommend using them for is siege defenses, as they will kill hundreds of men that way, but using them in a field battle is ill-advised. Next up the Hojo Fire Projecting Mangonels, who've received plus 10 reload skill and plus 5 accuracy compared to vanilla counterpart. Do you like your campaign movement to be excruciatingly slow? And do you like not hitting any enemy units? Then this is the unit for you. The only good thing they'll do consistently is force the enemy to attack you, even when you're the attacker, which is fairly valuable to be fair. The Hojo cannons are similar in that regard, although they can actually hit the enemy every once in a while, not that it actually matters since their damage is so small. Their buffs are the same as the Manganel, plus 10 reload skill and plus 5 accuracy compared to the European cannons. Next is the only good unit in this list, the Hojo Fire Rockets. They have received plus 5 reload skill and plus 10 accuracy as their buffs. They are the kings when it comes to killing cavalry, and they will generally do a decent amount of damage to anything they hit. Finally, the Hojo Unique Unit, the Hojo Hand Mortars. Imagine the Firebomb Thrower, but with 6 times the range. Sadly, even if they hit, their damage is disgustingly low, and the word hit isn't even really in their vocabulary. I rated them the lowest on the list of unique units in Shogun 2, I recommend completely avoiding this unit. Finally, it's army recommendation time. The early game is standard, with Yari and Boa Shigaro being your main units. You could recruit some Hojo Firebomb first before destroying your Siege Engineer's Workshop, but I'd really advise against it. They're quite expensive early on and they really just aren't worth it. Light Cav would be a much better alternative. I like to play the Hojo defensively and invest heavily on ranged power, foregoing cavalry altogether when getting to the later game. 
This means fielding many katana and naginata samurai to tank arrows while your bow warrior monks and hojo fire rockets do their thing. It's quite a heavy investment in the tech trees to get both bow warrior monks and hojo fire rockets unlocked, so this is fairly difficult to obtain and not necessary at all, but it does make for very fun battles. That is going to do it for the hojo clan overview. I hope this helps you blow up your foes. If you like these types of videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask them in the comments and I shall do my best to answer them. Also let me know which clan you'd like to see covered next. Thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed, have a good day and goodbye.